right, so to close out this course, we are going to do a little bonus video. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a editor menu that allows us to quickly just set up a new UI group. And I really just wanted to show this because you can take the, the code that you see here and just keep adding on more and more tools. But it's always a good thing to um, understand because I hate having to reset up structures all the time in Unity. So why not just create a little bit of code and it automatically sets up a UI group with a, with a base screen and a fader and all that stuff. So that's what I want to do. All right, so here we are back in Unity. Okay, so and we have a working UI system here. Uh, so what I want to do is actually duplicate this. Okay, and I'm just going to turn this guy off for now. And what I want to do is actually get rid of this register screen. We want to keep the the event system in there. I'm going to remove that one from there. And I'm just going to call this start screen. Okay, you'll notice that the, uh, the name should update appropriately. And below that, I'm going to get rid of a lot of this stuff, or all, most of it actually. Uh, because really, all that I want is a dark screen that just says start screen. This is going to become my prefab for the UI group. So I'm just going to say none and we're going to set this to a dark color here like so and then add some text and we'll just call this the start text and I'm going to make it full screen as well and we'll just say start screen. We will give it a nice font, a white color and we will change the size and center it up like so. All right, so with that all set up, what we have is a bare bones UI system, right? So we have the UI system with the start screen assigned and the fader assigned. So what we want to do is just put that into our UI prefabs. So we'll just say UI group. And now what we can do is we can write a really tiny script that allows us to launch or at least create a new UI group. So I'm going to delete this from the scene. We'll turn on our, <clears throat> our to-do app UI here. And I'm going to go into the editor folder now. Okay, and I'm going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this IP UI menus. All right. And I'm going to launch that script into mono develop here. And what we'll do Let's put that under the namespace. So indiepixel.ui. All right. Oops. And it needs, it is case sensitive. <clears throat> All right. And what I need to do is actually just create a menu item. And in order to access a menu item, I need to include the Unity Editor namespace. Okay, so now I can do brackets and menu item and give it a path. So this is going to be indie pixel. All right, forward slash UI tools and create UI group. How about that? And then underneath that, we're going to have a public static void create UI group. <clears throat> awesome. And so what we want to do now is just test that out. So I'm going to say debug.log and we'll say creating UI group just to make sure this all works. So let's go back to Unity. And you'll notice now we have a new menu option up here. And underneath that, if I click on it, it says UI tools create UI group. And in the console, when we click that, it gave us this message. Awesome. Super awesome. Okay, so now what we want to do is we actually just want to instantiate this prefab that we have in here, but we don't have access to it in a tangible way. We have to do it through code. So I want to look for this, right? So what I, what I need to do is find this particular object underneath the assets folder here. Okay, so what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're not going to do that anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to find that game object, okay, that prefab. So we're going to say game object uh, UI group is equal to asset database 
dot find. Actually, it's dot load asset at path. So then we want to provide it a path. So let's take a look at the arguments. So it needs a path and a type. All right, so we need the type. It's going to be a game object. All right, and then the path is going to be assets um, forward slash to do app. Let's see if I can remember this whole thing. Then it's prefab, then UI, and then UI group dot prefab. And I think that is correct. And I think it needs a, nope, we're fine. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So it's assets to do app, prefab, UI. Yep, that should work. Okay, so now we're gonna say if UI group exists, all right, if we actually found it, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say instantiate that UI group, simple as that. Else, we're going to do an editor utility dot display dialog. And we're going to say um, UI tools warning. And the message will be cannot find UI group prefab. And OK, so they can exit out. All right, so let's actually go and test that out and see if that just that little bit of code actually works for us. So I'm going to go up to IndiePixel, UI tools, create UI group, and boom, it creates a new UI group. The whole setup is all ready to go. So now you're good. The only thing that is weird is it adds the clone to it. So what I want to do is actually capture it from the instantiation. So I'm going to cast this to a game object, okay, and store it. Or what we could do, we could also make it easier. This might be a little too fancy. We say, no, we'll just do the, yeah, we'll, we'll just do it like this. Hold on. Game object, and we'll store that in the game object. Created group. OK. And, and what we'll do is we'll say created group dot name is equal to UI group, like so. So it just renames it. All right, so let's try that again. Delete that, and there you go. Boom, all ready to go. So you can start adding more screens, so on and so forth. All right, so that's all I really wanted to show. I hope you guys um, got a ton out of this course. We did cover a lot of ground, but I hope you can see um, just how reusable this is. And I've offered the, the code up in this particular course as well. So you have access to all the scripts and everything like that. And you're always well, more than welcome to ask me questions about it um, or provide feedback. Maybe there's other features I didn't even think of. All right, so I'm gonna sign off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next course. Thanks so much.